What's going on, young people? Thanks for joining me for our third homework video of this particular unit, Social Psychology. They were talking about three big things, three experiments that I want to go through with you all. The first experiment that I want to talk about is from a guy named Solomon Ash, or who talked about what's called conformity. The second experiment I want to talk about is a guy named Stanley Milgram, who talked about obedience. And then we're going to talk about the famous Zimbardo's Stanford Prison Experiment. Okay. Um, all three of these experiments, we have some video footage of that we're going to watch in class. Make sure that you have seen these videos because there'll be questions on your quizzes and tests that you'll have to be able to get and understand from having watched the video footage of the experiment. So make sure that you see these videos. Okay. The first experiment I want to talk about is a guy named Solomon Ash. All right. So Roman number one, make sure you get the name Ash down. And his study was about what's called conformity. Okay. It's a really clever experiment. They want to see what makes people try to fit in. That's what conformity is, is doing what the rest of the group is doing. Okay. So you see this picture over here on the left. You can see they have one, two, three, they have five guys sitting at a table. And what they would do is they told these guys that they're being tested on their vision. Okay, so they were shown a series of lines. There might be a line like this on the left and then three lines on the right. And the people were asked to verbally out loud say which line on the right best matched the line on the left. So you can try this for yourself, okay? Out of choice A, B, and C, which line do you feel like best matches the line on the left? Okay, you probably have your answer in mind. So what happened, the first few times they did this exercise, you know, all the people would say the exact same thing, right? In this case, you know, they would probably all say C. That seems to be the right answer. There'd be three or four cases where they all said the right answer, they all said the right answer. And then all of a sudden, a line would be shown like this. And the first guy would say A. And the second guy would say A. And the third guy would say A. And the fourth guy would say A. And the fifth guy would be so confused. They'd be staring at the board, trying to figure out like, why are they all saying A? It looks pretty clear like the answer is C. And what the experimenters would want to do is see, what would this person, the last guy in line, would they conform? What would they do? So this guy didn't know it, but these four people were confederates. They were actors, they were in on it. They were purposefully giving the wrong answer, but acting, the exact same as they had before to see what this guy would do. And what they found is that a lot of the time, this person would give an answer that went against what they really saw and thought simply because the other guys in the room, the rest of the group had all said A. So they would just kind of go along with it and said A as well. So again, uh, make sure that you watch this video clip uh, at some point, right? But uh, the idea here, conformity, it's when you give in to pressure. It could be actual pressure, right? Like the group, the people around you, they can be trying to get you to act a certain way, but it can also be imagined pressure. Sometimes, especially as teenagers, y'all think there's pressure when there's really not, but you still change your behavior. You change the, the way you dress, the way you talk, the way you act, um, the things that you do for fun, the teams you join, the music you listen to, the social media you use, you kind of go along with what the group is doing, okay? So they did a bunch of different versions of this test. And what they found was that the size of the group mattered. That impacts whether or not people would conform. Whether or not you are anonymous impacts whether or not you conform, all right? We'll talk about that in class. Um, if you like the other people in the room, if you think they seem cool or smart, or you want to be like them or they're your friends, that makes you more likely to conform. Now, here's something interesting from this study. They found that if any of those other people, the volunteers, the Confederates, if any of them dissented, to dissent, that's the opposite of conformity. It's to, to speak up or to do the opposite thing that everyone else is doing. They found that if someone in the group said a different answer, even if it was like also wrong, like if they said B, simply having somebody stand up and break the group norms and break the unanimity, the fact that everyone else was unanimous, having somebody dissent, this means that it's almost like it gives you permission to dissent as well. So as long as someone stands up and does something different, it makes it more likely for others to do something different. So why? Why do we conform? Why is this part of human nature to 
do what everyone else is doing? Well, the first reason is called normative influence. We talk about social norms. What is considered normal, right? This is like a desire to fit in. You want to be approved. You want to be liked by the other members of the group. Maybe this is about a peer pressure thing, but normative influence is like, you just want to do what everyone else is doing so that you fit in. You don't want to be the weird one. You want to be like everyone else. So that's one reason why we conform. Another reason why we conform is sometimes we genuinely think like they must be right. It's not like we just like value their opinion and want them to like us. It's more like we start to doubt ourselves and our own thinking. And we feel like they must have more information than I do. They must, uh, I must have misunderstood the, the prompt or my vision must not be great right now or I must be confused. So this is when you just kind of like believe other people's facts. Why do you do it? Well, I, I thought that they were right. I thought they must know what they're talking about. It's like, um, you know, if you're going somewhere and you're with a group of people and everyone else starts walking one way and you walk that way as well, it turns out that you're all lost. Like, well, why'd you follow them? Uh, I thought that they knew where they were going. That's informational. Whereas if you're like, ah, I went the way they went because like, I didn't want to be the weirdo going off by myself. That's you being concerned by normative influence. So these are two reasons why people can form really interesting, cool research about why people go along with others. The second study I want to talk about with y'all is a guy named Stanley Milgram. Put a star by this study. Um, it's so important. The study was about obedience. Can you see what this box is? Probably not, let me blow it up for you here. Um, so this box here has a bunch of different switches on it. And if you look closely, it says like, moderate shock, strong shock, very strong shock, intense shock, extreme intensity shock, danger, severe shock. And then way over here, it just says XXX. This box that was shocking people was used as part of Stanley Milgram's experiment. Here's what would happen, okay? Um, an individual, the subject would show up and say, hey, we're doing an experiment on teaching and learning. We need you to be the teacher. Okay, so they would meet the learner and the learner was another confederate, a fake test subject, an actor, they were in on it. Okay, but what happened is they'd be in different rooms and they'd say, okay, teacher, you need to read a list of words to the subject and the subject needs to respond a certain way for each word, okay? It was like an association thing. It was supposed to be testing the subject's memory, okay? And kind of like in the ASH study, when he started reading out words, reading out the list, the learner started doing pretty well. They were getting a few right, okay? But eventually there became a point where the learner started to mess up the words. And what the experimenter said was, okay, teacher, this is a study of learning and memory. We need you to flip the switch to shock, to administer an electric shock to the guy in the other room. So he flipped the switch, you hear this ow sound. And then the experimenter says, continue. So he reads another word. The guy misses it. The experimenter says, administer the shock. So he flips the next switch. You hear, ow, that hurt. Again, he reads a word. He misses it. The experimenter says, shock him. And slowly, the guy continues working their way up this board towards very strong shock, intense shock, extreme intensity shock, danger, severe shock, XXX. And as they progress up the board, the shouts, the screams get louder and louder. This guy is very clearly in pain. He's having a tough time. He talks about he's having heart trouble and his chest is hurting. And the experimenter just keeps saying, please continue. You must go on. And what the study was about was how far up the board will just like your random person go in shocking a stranger just because they're told to by a guy in a lab coat. And what they found was that people go a really long way. Milgram's conclusion was that people will obey an authority figure. Um, it's like, um, as long as someone's telling us to do it, we don't feel like we're to blame. Here's what he wrote in his study. Subjects, right? The, the teachers, the people that were, they were uh, analyzing, well, I want to see what they did. Subjects went against their moral beliefs even while hearing the screams of the victims. He wrote, adults were willing to go almost any length on the command of an authority. Most of the people went all the way to XXX. 
even after the learner went silent. Really scary. Okay, so a question for you to think about is this study was done like in the 60s, 50s, 60s. If, if they did a study nowadays, do you think that people would still do the same thing? Like, do you think there's something unique about America in the 50s and 60s that people would just like obey an authority figure? Or do you think that now people would stand up and do the right thing? Interesting question. Um, a guy named Berger actually did this a few years ago. He tried it again. He found folks who hadn't heard of the Milgram experiment. And he found that still two thirds of the subjects gave the shocks, like went up the board. Okay. And it's interesting, unlike Milgram, he also did the test where he had some women sign up. Do you think the women were more or less likely to give the shocks to a stranger? Women are actually more likely. We'll talk about why this might have been. So famous experiment in Milgram about how people obey authority figures. So again, make sure that we watch the video of this. The third experiment I wanna talk about is a guy named Philip Zimbardo. It's called the Stanford Prison Experiment. And if you look here at this picture, what's going on here? Can y'all tell? Can you see it? What is happening here? What if I told you this is a picture from World War II? Then would you have a guess as to what was happening here? Okay. So what we have, you may have to figure out, is we have a Jewish rabbi here. And these folks are Nazi soldiers, Nazi officers. And what they're about to do is they're about to shave this rabbi's hair and beard. Okay. Um, in the Jewish faith, having the long hair, uncut beard and hair, is a sign of your devotion to God. Okay. It's a sign of your religious belief. And they're about to shave off this guy's head and beard. Obviously, you've learned about the Holocaust. You know the terrible things that were done in Nazi Germany. Um, and what Zimbardo wanted to find out was, were these people the kind of Nazi officers who would do terrible things to Jewish folks in concentration camps, to Black folks, to gay folks? Um, were these just like evil people? Or were they just kind of doing what they were told, going with the flow? Um, so what he did was he created a sample prison in the basement of Stanford University. And he randomly assigned some people to be prisoners. And he randomly assigned some college students to be prison guards. He just kind of wanted to watch and see what would happen. And what he found was that in just a few days, um, the people who were assigned to be guards, they started treating the prisoners terribly. They were cruel, authoritarian. Um, cursing at these individuals, spraying fire extinguishers at them, burning their skin, taking away their clothes, um, isolating them, not letting them have food and water, um, very much dehumanizing. These other college students, people who like, they were in school with together. And what he found out was also interesting was that the prisoners, they just kind of gave in and gave up. They demonstrated learned helplessness. It's like, they felt like they didn't have any control over the situation. They really felt like they were prisoners. And what he found was that people kind of comply or they, they fit in with the roles. What Zimbardo said is that like, sometimes good people or people that like we think of as being good, they do terrible things because of the situation they're put in. So um, he called this the power of the situation. It's one of the most famous experiments, um, raised a lot of ethical concern because it was like how terribly these people were treated. The experiment was supposed to last two weeks. It only ended up lasting six days because the treatment of these, these subjects, these college students who volunteered to be in the study, the treatment was so terrible um, that outside folks came in and said that, whoa, this, can, this cannot continue anymore. This looks really bad. Um, and again, the video we'll watch actually interviews some of the, the participants after the fact, kind of talk about like how did this experiment affect them in the long run? A um, lot of ethical concerns here, but really interesting how it showed that like people kind of live into the roles that are given them and are expected of them. So Again, we'll, we'll watch some of these videos. Make sure that you watch them. Um, check for understanding. I got five names on the left, five different experimenters, and then five different conclusions to the right. Make sure that you are able to match these up. In class, we'll go over some mnemonics to try and help you remember this. Appreciate y'all.